Hey everybody, it's a scary pair. Recently I did an iceberg video on the Mario franchise, and since you all really like that video, I decided to do another iceberg video, but this time on football. So the same rules still apply, the well known facts are near the top of the iceberg, and the further down we go, the darker, more mysterious and more obscure the facts get. Obviously I won't cover every single fact on football or else I'm going to be here forever, but anyway, let's get straight into it. Arsenal Invincibles 2004 This is referring to the season where Arsenal managed to complete a whole season without losing a single game. As of time of recording, they are the only club in the Premier League to do so. European Super League Probably the most controversial element on the iceberg, the European Super League. On the 18th of April 2021, 12 teams decided to break away from their domestic leads and form a European Super League. The 12 clubs included Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Juventus, Inter Milan and AC Milan. It was an annual club football competition that was to be contested by 20 European football clubs, 12 of which that I've just named were permanent members and could not be relegated from the Super League, and the other 8 clubs were to be invited to it based on their performance in their domestic league's most recent season. It was planned as a breakaway competition to rival or even replace the UEFA Champions League. The Real Madrid president Florento Perez would be appointed as the first chairman of the organisation. As we all know, this idea was heavily backlashed, and rightly so. Since this competition was elitist and removed any competition from the sport, since the initial 12 clubs would never be relegated from the competition, the whole idea was solely based upon gaining more money per match. The whole idea threatened to ruin football forever. Fans, players, managers and even the British government heavily backlashed this idea, which led to protests outside the football club's training and playing ground, which eventually led with all of the 12 clubs, with the exception of Barcelona, Real Madrid and Juventus, eventually withdrawing from the European Super League, a mere three days after they joined it. At the time of recording, only Barcelona, Real Madrid and Juventus remain in the European Super League. Hopefully, those three clubs will withdraw from this disaster of an idea soon. VAR stands for Virtual Assistant Referee. It was introduced in the 2018 World Cup. It is a monitor that referees can use to watch back a key decision to help the main referee decide on the pitch. Although it has a lot of controversy, people are claiming that it's taking too long and it's way too strict on the offside and handball laws. And at the moment, it's at its infancy. Alan Shearer Alan Shearer is currently the all-time Premier League top goalscorer, with 260 Premier League goals to his name. Leicester City winning the league In 2016, Leicester City won the Premier League despite having 5,000 to 1 odds of them winning it and finishing 14th in the season before just barely escaping relegation. What happened in the following year was simply a miracle. Manchester United's treble win 1999. This is referring to the 1998-1999 season where Manchester United won the treble, that being the Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League all in one season. Notts County Notts County are the oldest football club in the world, being founded in 1862. The football is a dodecahedron shape. Many people think that for football it's a spherical shape, though it's actually a dodecahedron. Manchester City Centurions this is the season where Manchester City accumulated 100 points in one season, which is 10 more points from the Arsenal Invincibles. This occurred in the 2017-2018 season. At the time of recording, this is the most amount of points any team in the Premier League has won in one season. UEFA Cup Winners' Cup this is a tournament where the winners of every domestic cup winner from every team in Europe compete in a tournament, but it got dissolved in 1999 as the Europa League took it over, since if you win your country's domestic cup you get qualifications for the Europa League. St Totterham's Day This is a day created by Arsenal fans and it is the day where Tottenham cannot mathematically finish above Arsenal at the end of the season. At the time of recording, the last time St Totterham's Day was celebrated by Arsenal fans was at the end of the 2015-16 season. Thierry Henry Handball 2009 In the qualifying round for the 2010 World Cup, 
Thierry Henry for France handed the ball before crossing the ball over to William Gallas to score the winner against Ireland. The hand of God. This happened in the 1986 World Cup when Diego Maradona used his hand to punch the ball into the net against England which pushed Argentina into the semi-finals of the World Cup. After the match Maradona claimed that he never handled the ball and that the goal was scored by the hand of God and the head of Diego. Who ate all the pies? This is probably the oldest and probably the most famous football chant. This dates back to 1864 with the Sheffield United goalkeeper that weighed up to 22 stones. He got up early to the team hotel, sneaked down to the dining room and ate all of the pies that were laid out for the team's breakfast. Champions League original format. Now if you finish in the top four or top three of your domestic league, you will get qualifications for the Champions League. But originally, just the winners of the domestic leagues had qualifications and there were no group stages, it just went straight to the knockout. This format was dissolved and reformed into what it is now in 1992. And many people claim that it was this that caused the eventual abolition of the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. Arsenal wash their new goalkeeper kit. Arsenal always make sure their new goalkeeper kit is washed before it's used for the first time. This dates back to the 1927 FA Cup final when the then Arsenal goalkeeper Dan Lewis let in a soft goal against Cardiff which gave Cardiff the FA Cup. The reason why he said that he conceded that goal is because the ball slipped from his grasp and the ball went over the line as it brushed against the shiny surface of Lewis's new jumper. Football club's previous names. Lots of football clubs have original names. The most famous included Manchester United who were originally called Newton Heath, Manchester City was called Ardwick, Arsenal was called Dial Square, then Royal Arsenal, then Woolwich Arsenal. West Ham was called Thames Ironswork FC, and Everton was originally called St Domingo FC. The 50 plus 1 rule. This is a rule that's mainly implemented in German football, which basically protects the clubs using the 50 plus 1 rule from the influence of external investors. This is the reason why Bayern Munich never joined the European Super League. The World Cup was stolen? We all know what the World Cup looks like, but it originally looked like this. This is because of the 1966 original World Cup trophy was stolen. This was because in 1966, just before the World Cup final between England and West Germany, the original World Cup trophy was stolen, but a dog called Pickles found the trophy under a bush while out for a walk in South London. But in 1983, the trophy was stolen again, and it's never been found since. Apparently it was melted and sold by the thieves, so FIFA made a new World Cup trophy, which is the one we have now. Game 39 Game 39 of the international round was meant to be an extra round of matches in the Premier League to be played at neutral venues outside England that occurred after the 38th and final round of fixtures in the Premier League. This idea was first announced in 2008 and was meant to start at the beginning of the 2013-14 season. Just like the European Super League, this idea was strongly opposed by several club managers since the idea was motivated by money and it was just a way for the chairman of the clubs to get more money from the fans. So in May 2010, Game 39 was dropped. The three game season. This is referring to the 1939-1940 season which was the shortest ever football season which lasted only three games. This is due to the Second World War, where Britain declared war on Germany on Sunday the 3rd of September 1939. Large gathering crowds were suspended with the implementation of the Emergency Powers Act of 1939. Golden slash Silver Goal This idea was proposed in 1993. This was an alternative to extra time. Golden goal is when at the end of the normal 90 minutes, if the scores are level, then extra 30 minutes of extra time is played. However, if either team scores a goal during that period of extra time, the game ends immediately and the scoring team becomes the winner. If there had been no goals scored after the 30 minutes of extra time, a penalty shootout will decide the match. This was done to reduce the number of games going to penalties. For the 2002-2003 season, UEFA introduced a silver goal, which was another alternative to decide a competition in a match. In extra time, the team leading after the first 15 minutes would win and the game would no longer stop the instant a team scored. Although very shortly, both Golden Goal and Silver Goal were scrapped. Mainly because Golden Goal made the teams a lot more cautious and started playing a lot more defensively, which made extra time more boring to watch, and players tended to get really angry when their team lost due to the Golden Goal rule. 
especially if the goal was offside and the linesman didn't flag it for offside or vice versa. The silver goal rule has been called illogical since that it denies a losing team a chance of saving the match simply by the virtue of when the goal scored. For example, if a team scores in the last minute of the first half of extra time, they would win due to the silver goal rule. But if they scored it in the first minute of the second half of extra time, then the opposing team would still have about 15 minutes to attempt to score the equaliser. But ultimately, there was just a lot of confusion since there was three alternatives you can use. Normal extra time, golden goal or silver goal. And it was just, it was just pretty much chaotic. So both were scrapped and now we just have extra time. Arsenal aren't from North London? This is true actually. Arsenal were founded in Woolwich, which is in East London. In fact, the previous name was Woolwich Arsenal before they moved up to Finsbury Park in North London. And they dropped the Woolwich part of the name and they just referred to themselves as just Arsenal. Tottenham are the only team in the North London derby to be actually from North London. So Arsenal's move from Woolwich to Finsbury Park was what sparked the rivalry between these two clubs. Since Finsbury Park is only about three miles away from White Hart Lane, Thus, Tottenham accused Arsenal of invading their territory. Thus, a North London derby was born. Atletico Madrid's kit colours. Why do Atletico Madrid play in red and white? Well, when Atletico Madrid was founded, they had to go to England to buy the kit colours for them. So they tried to buy Backburn Rovers blue and white kits like Atletico Bilbao did. But they just bought the Blackburn blue shorts, which is why they wear dark blue shorts. But they failed to find the actual shirt of Blackburn to purchase, so Atletico Madrid instead bought the red and white shirts of Southampton. So not only was Atletico Madrid's colours almost blue and white, but they only play in red and white because of Southampton. The Heisel disaster. In 1985, the European Cup final between Liverpool and Juventus, Liverpool supporters charged at Juventus supporters and broke a fence that was separating them from the neutral fans. Juventus fans ran back onto the terraces and away from the threat into a concrete wall. The fans already standing near the wall were crushed and the wall eventually collapsed. Liverpool fans were mainly blamed from this disaster, which led to all English clubs being banned from European competitions for five years, with Liverpool being banned from an extra year on top of the five-year ban, which also led to the formation of the Premier League. St Woolwich Day Similar to St Tottenham's Day, but this is a day Tottenham fans celebrate, the day when Arsenal cannot mathematically finish above Tottenham at the end of the season. The name comes from where Arsenal originally came from, which was Woolwich, and it reminds Tottenham fans that Arsenal were the North London invaders that sparked the rivalry between Arsenal and Tottenham. So every season it will either be St Tottenham's Day or St Woolwich Day. The Hillsborough disaster. In 1989, in an FA Cup semi-final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest, the police opened the gates of the Hillsborough Stadium where the game was being hosted. However, the stadium was already overcrowded. As a result, the Leppings end of the stadium was seriously overcrowded and it led to a fatal human crush. 96 Liverpool fans died that day. This disaster led to the introduction to an all-seater stadium and the removal of the fence that separated the fans from the players. The Munich Air Disaster I've already done a video explaining the Munich Air Disaster in a lot of detail, which I'll link as an end card in this video. But to sum it up very briefly, in 1958, eight players in the Manchester United first team died in a plane crash after the plane stopped for refuelling in a snowy Munich airport. The Bradford City Fire Disaster. This happened in 1985, when Bradford City were playing against Lincoln City in the Football League Third Division. At 3.40pm, it was announced that a small fire was in the main stand. Although due to the windy conditions, in less than four minutes the fire had engulfed the whole stand, trapping some people in their seats. And some of the fans tried to flee the stadium and escape onto the pitch, but the others at the back end of the stand tried to break down the locked doors exits to escape, and many were burned to death at the turnstile gates, which has also been locked up after the match had begun. Shirt number zero. A footballer called Hai Chen Zero Yulai, again I'm sorry if I messed up that name, is the only footballer to ever wear this shirt number zero. He wore this number because he was nicknamed the Zeros. Sadly, he died in 2004 and FIFA outlawed that number from being worn again. Preston North End were the original Invincibles? Everybody remembers the Arsenal Invincibles, but they're not the first team to complete a season unbeaten in the English League. All the way back in 1888, in the first ever Football League, Preston North End won that, making them not only the first team to win a professional English League title, 
but they also completed the season unbeaten. That unbeaten record was maintained for 116 years until, of course, Arsenal did it in 2004. So maybe we should all be going on about Preston's unbeaten season rather than Arsenal's. Kim Christensen In 2009, a goalkeeper called Kim Christensen was caught on camera using his feet to push the bottom of his goalpost inwards to make his goal smaller than the opposition goal before a match. Unfortunately, the referee soon spotted that he was cheating and moved the goalpost back to their original position, but still, it's a pretty funny way of cheating. Anfield was originally Everton Stadium. This dates all the way back when Everton was founded as St Domingo SC in 1878. Once they changed their name to Everton, they moved to Priory Road in the city of Liverpool, but due to the growing popularity of the club, they had to move to a bigger ground, to the move to Anfield, which means that Everton's original stadium was Anfield. Liverpool's current ground. Everton was becoming a really popular club, especially when they won the Football League in 1891. So the owner of Anfield at the time wanted to pay more rents from Everton, but Everton's board didn't want to pay that much money in order to stay at Anfield. So Everton moved to Goodison Park. When Everton moved, the Anfield owner and a few other members stayed at Anfield and formed the Liverpool Football Club in 1892. Sheffield FC. Even though it said that Notts County is the oldest football club in the world, but Sheffield FC are actually officially the oldest football club in the world. Notts County was founded in 1862, while Sheffield FC was founded in 1857, five years prior to Notts County. The reason why it's Notts County that's recognised as the oldest club in the world, not Sheffield FC, is because Sheffield FC never really become a proper professional football club. They're sort of like a semi-professional club, whilst Notts County has been a professional club until the end of the 2018-19 to season where they got relegated to the National League and became a non-league club. Roberto Rojas. In 1989, Rojas was in goal for the Chile's 1990 World Cup qualifier against Brazil. Chile were 1-0 down and would be eliminated from the upcoming World Cup if they fail to beat Brazil. But near the end of the match, a Brazilian fan threw a firework at Rojas' head and the keeper fell down on the pitch with blood pouring from his head, holding his forehead. It seemed that, that Rojas has been hit by a firework, which is an incident that may, have, that may have made the match null and void. However, it was later revealed that Rojas actually was not hit by the firework at all. Apparently, he cut his own head on purpose with a razor blade that he has hidden in his glove in order to get the match null and void. As a result, FIFA awarded Brazil a 2-0 win, which eliminated Chile for the 1990 World Cup, and as a consequence, Chile were banned from the 1994 World Cup, and Rojas was banned from football for life. Football Manager in 1888 This was created as an April Fool's joke, but on April the 1st, 2020, the Football Manager official Twitter page tweeted this picture of what the game Football Manager may have looked like in the first ever Football League in 1888. It had everything including a SEPA filter, handwritten letters instead of emails to make it look like the 1980s. Although it is a fake, I really want this to happen. So if you're watching this creators of Football Manager, I mean you probably aren't to be fair, but if you are, please make Football Manager 1888. It will be epic and so interesting. Seriously, actually really consider it. 149 0. This is not only the highest scoreline in the history of the sport, but it's also the greatest number of own goals scored in one match. In 2002, a Madagascan team staged a protest against a biased referee by continuously whacking the ball into their own net. Hence, the game ended with them losing 149 0. After the game, the Madagascan FA handed out very long suspensions to four players from that team. Champions League is fixed? We all know that football can be elitist at times, I mean just look at the European Super League for example. But some people say that the Champions League is fixed and is elitist. In the 2018 Champions League campaign, Roma was playing Barcelona in the quarter-final. As you all know, Roma beat Barcelona to play Liverpool in the semi-final. But what was weird that, apparently, it was rumoured that Roma started selling tickets for the semi-final against Liverpool before Roma knocked out Barcelona in the quarter-final. And apparently, in the 2019 Champions League campaign, the Real Madrid president, Florento Perez, made sure that Real Madrid played Ajax in the last 16 when they were doing the draws. But obviously, that ultimately backfires since Ajax smashed Real Madrid 5 through an aggregate. But it's size like this that makes some people think that the Champions League is rigged. Tottenham Hotspur food poisoning theory. It was the final day of the 2009-2006 season. 
and both Arsenal and Tottenham were tied on points. Both teams were fighting to finish in the top four. But before Tottenham's last game against West Ham, the entire Tottenham team went down with a mysterious bug and they were really sick and ill after their team dinner. Some people think that the reason for this is because an Arsenal fan has sneaked into Tottenham's dining room and poisoned the team dinner that Tottenham ate. As a result, it got half of the Tottenham team sick and Tottenham ended up losing 2-1 to West Ham and Arsenal ended up finishing in fourth place at the end of that campaign. The Spanish Civil War shaped El Clasico. Some people think that the famous El Clasico match between Barcelona and Real Madrid is based off of the infamous Ronaldo versus Messi debate, but it actually dates all the way back to the Spanish Civil War in 1936 to 1939, which eventually led to the Great Spanish Dictation, where Francisco Franco became the absolute dictator of Spain and conquered Barcelona and Madrid. Due to this, Franco used Real Madrid as a form of a propaganda to show how strong Spain was. So this led to fans of Barcelona now fighting with Barcelona to be the biggest club in Spain. Not only in a sporting sense, but with a political sense to earn the favour of the dictator of Spain, Francisco Franco, as well. Erling Haaland is a robot. Possibly the weirdest theory in this video, but some people think that since the Borussia Dortmund footballer Erling Haaland is only 20 years old but so insanely fast and insanely good at football, some people have concluded that he isn't a human at all, he's a robot and he was genetically engineered in a science lab. Wow, there's a lot of facts and theories in the beautiful game of football. But if you enjoyed this video or learned anything new at some point, then please like and subscribe. And this video was so fun to make and I really hope you all had fun watching it. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next week.